Welcome to today's program. The American Library Association's Youth Media Awards press conference will begin shortly after the announcements of this year's recipients of the Alex Awards. The Alex Awards are given to 10 books written for adults that have special appeal to young adults, ages 12 through 18. Sponsored by the Margaret A. Edwards Trust and Booklist and administered by the Young Adult Library Services Association, the awards were first given annually beginning in 1998 and became an official ALA award in 2002. The awards are named after Margaret Alexander Edwards, who was called Alex by her friends. Edwards was a pioneer in young adult librarianship, working with teens for many years at the Enoch Pratt Library in Baltimore. She served as an inspiration to many librarians who serve young adults. This year's 10 winning titles are All Involved by Ryan Gattis, published by Echo, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. Between the World and Me by ta Coates, published by Spiegel and Growl, an imprint of Random House, a division of Penguin Random House, LLC. Bones and All by Camille D'Angelis, published by St. Martin's Press. Futuristic Violence and Fancy Suits by David Wong, published by Thomas Dunn Books, an imprint of St. Martin's Press. Girl at War by Sarah Novick, published by Random House, an imprint and division of Penguin Random House, LLC. Half the World by Joe Abercrombie, published by Del Rey, an imprint of Random House, a division of Random House LLC, a Penguin Random House Company. Humans of New York, Stories, by Brandon Stanton, published by St. Martin's Press. Sacred Heart, by Liz Suburbia, published by Fantagraphics Books Incorporated. Undocumented, a Dominican boy's odyssey from a homeless shelter to the Ivy League, by Daniel Padilla Peralta published by Penguin Press, an imprint of Penguin Random House, LLC. The Unraveling of Mercy Lewis by Kaya Parsonen, published by Harper, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. For more information on the Alex Awards, including a list of vetted nominations, please visit ala.org slash yalsa slash alex dash awards. Good morning. Are you excited? Yeah. Me too. I'm Andrew Medler, president of the Association for Library Service to Children, also known as ALSK. And I am thrilled to be here in Boston for what has come to be known as the premier event for the recognition of books and media for young people throughout the world. For those of you watching online, especially all of you young people, kids and teens watching in your libraries and schools and homes, we're so excited you're here with us. Everybody give a wave to the young people at home. I would like to welcome the members of the media and our publishing colleagues and other guests who have joined us here this morning. Also, thank you to the committees who have had the challenge and the thrill of selecting today's winners. I would now like to introduce someone who many of us have been fortunate enough to know and have the pleasure to work with. She is at the helm of the oldest and largest library association in the world with a membership that exceeds 58,000. Please help me welcome Sari Feldman, president of the American Library Association. Good morning, everyone here with us and those watching us. It's my pleasure to be with, here with you this morning. In fact, among the highlights of serving as ALA president is having the unique opportunity to participate in today's announcements, as well as being among the first to know which video, audio, books, books, and authors are voted the best of the best. As libraries transform to advance our legacy of reading and create a more digitally inclusive society, we find ourselves as partners in learning, exploration, and inspiration. We are providing the best reading, listening, and viewing materials in every format 
to ensure access to information and enable our communities to keep pace with, dynamic, with a dynamic knowledge economy. People may know libraries for what we have for people, but we recognize that our value also comes from what we do with and for people. Today's announcements illustrate one of the fundamental roles that librarians and library workers play in transforming lives, opening young minds to the very best books. For this morning's Youth Media Awards announcement, we have a special video message from Jean Luen Yang, the newly appointed He is our newly appointed National Ambassador for Young People's Literature by the Library of Congress. So let's watch the video. Hi, librarians. It's me, Jean Yang. I make graphic novels. I'm also the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. Listen, I want to tell you all how important you are, how much you mean to us authors. We love you because you're in the business of love. You're like matchmakers. You match readers with books that they'll love. And we all know the world just doesn't work without love. We authors couldn't do what we do if you all didn't do what you do. So thank you. Have a wonderful time at ALA. You deserve it. What a great video. I want to thank Gene for his video and his support of the ALA Youth Media Awards. On behalf of ALA and its executive board, I also would like to thank the awards committee. They worked so hard to select today's recipients. I know it's a daunting and exciting opportunity as the committee deliberates and recognizes the best in class. ALA is honored to present these awards and to be an essential piece of the media ecosystem that brings attention to the very best for youth and their families. Because of you, our libraries and our collections will deliver on the promise of individual opportunity and community progress. This year, we will announce 19 awards that recognize the best selections in books and media for children and young adults. Please note that due to the short production time between the selection of award recipients and this morning's announcements, presentation slide information was cited from the copyright page of selected titles and from covers of selected media. In some cases, cited information may have changed since the material was published or produced. In such cases, publishers and producers will have the opportunity to update their information after our announcement. Now, on with the announcement of the Schneider Family Book Awards. The Schneider Family Book Awards, donated by Dr. Katherine Schneider, honor an author or illustrator for a book that embodies an artistic expression of the disability experience for child and adolescent audiences. The award administered by the American Library Association is given annually for the best children's, teen, and middle school book. This year's winners are for best young children's book, Emmanuel's Dream. <laughs> the true story of Emmanuel Ofasu Yeboah written by Laurie Ann Thompson, illustrated by Sean Qualls, and published by Schwartz and Wade Books, an imprint of Random House Children's Books, a division of Random House LLC, a Penguin Random House Company, New York. Against almost insurmountable odds, Emmanuel Ofasu Yeboah, born with only one strong leg, sets out to ride a bike 400 miles across Ghana to raise awareness for the disabled. With the message of, being disabled does not mean unable, the stunning mixed media art supports this uplifting and inspiring story. 
This year, there are two recipients of the Schneider Family Book Award for Best Middle Grade Books, and they are Fish in a Tree <laughs> by Linda Malali Hunt. Nancy Paulson Books, published by the Penguin Group. Allie moves through multiple elementary schools without learning to read by using her strengths in math and art along with some behavior distractions. When a new teacher discovers Allie has dyslexia, he uses patience and sensitivity to build up Allie's confidence as well as her ability to read. And the war that saved my life. by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley, Dial Books for Young Readers, published by the Penguin Group. Set during World War II, Ada is a resourceful character who slowly and believably makes accommodations for her untreated clubfoot. Her growth as a character, her acceptance by the villagers, and the home she and her brother make with Susan, their sponsor, is both heartfelt and powerful. And our final award for best teen book is The Unlikely Hero of Room 13B. <laughs> by Teresa Toten and published by Delacorte Press, an imprint of Random House Children's Book, a division of Random House LLC, a Penguin Random House Company, New York. Enter 13B where the support group for young adults with obsessive compulsive disorder meets every week. Here, an unlikely band of superheroes, led by their own Batman, Adam, works together to confront their personal struggles and discover the inner strength to keep moving forward. I would like to thank award jury chair, Allison Beecher, and her jury. Would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Our next award is the Stonewall Book Awards. <clears throat> Mike Morgan and Larry Roman's Children's and Young Adult Literature Award. Sponsored by the Book Awards Committee of the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Roundtable, the award is given annually to English language books of exceptional merit relating to the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered experience. The committee chose two honor books. They are Wonders of the Invisible World, <laughs> written by Christopher Barzak, published by Alfred A. Knopf, imprint of Random House Children's Book, a division of Penguin Random House, LLC. And sex is a funny word. <laughs> a book about bodies, feelings, and you, written by Corey Silverberg and Fiona Smith, illustrated by Fiona Smith, and published by Seven Stories Press. The winner of the 2016 Stonewall Book Awards, Mike Morgan and Larry Roman's Children's Award is George. George was written by Alex Gino, published by Scholastic Press, an imprint of Scholastic Incorporated. When people look at George, they see a boy but she knows she's a girl. With the help of her best friend, George comes up with a plan, not just so she can be Charlotte in her school play, but so everyone can know who she is once and for all. This year, the committee also has selected a 2016 Stonewall Book Awards Mike Morgan and Larry Roman's Young Adult Literature Award, The Porcupine of Truth. The Porcupine of Truth is written by Bill Konigsberg, published by Arthur A. Levine Books, an imprint of Scholastic Incorporated. Carson is stuck in Billings, Montana, 
when he meets Aisha. The two head out for an epic road trip that will change both their lives. Their adventure helps them find a community, a history, and a family. I would like to thank the award subcommittee chair, Marion Mays, and her subcommittee for today's selections. Will you, all please, will you all please stand and be recognized? Thank you, Madam President. This year, ALA is going green. A press release announcing all today's winners will post to our webcast platform immediately after the conclusion of our announcements. And audience, mem audience members here can also visit ALA's ILoveLibraries.org for a list of today's winners and other announcements of notable and distinguished books and media for children, teens, and for grown-ups too. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Pauletta Brown Bracey, Chair of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee, who will announce this year's selection of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards. Good morning. I am Pauletta Brown Bracey, Chair of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee. The Coretta Scott King Book Awards commemorate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and honor Mrs. Coretta Scott King for continuing her husband's work. The Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee, a division of the American Library Association's Ethnic and Multicultural Information Exchange Roundtable, administers the award annually. Our first award is the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement. The award is presented in even years to an African American author or illustrator for a body of his or her published works that address the African American experience for children and young adults. The award is named in memory of the award winning children's author Virginia Hamilton. Hamilton wrote over 35 books throughout her career and received numerous awards, including the Coretta Scott King Book Award, the Newbery Medal, and a host of others. The recipient of the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement is author and illustrator Jerry Pinckney. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Pinckney's illustrations detail the world that resonates with readers long after the pages of a book have been turned. His five decades of work offer compelling artistic insights into the legacy of African American storytelling and experience. Beyond Pinckney's technical brilliance, his support of differentiated learning through art and of young illustrators sets him apart as both artistic, as both artist and educator. His powerful illustrations have redefined the scope of the sophisticated picture book and its use with multiple levels of learners. I would like to thank award chair Dr. Darwin L. Henderson and the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement Committee who made today's announcement possible. Will you all please stand and be recognized? Next are the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, which honor African American authors and illustrators of outstanding books for children and young people that promote the understanding and appreciation of all people. First is the Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Award for New Talent for Author and Illustrator. This year's recipients are author Ronald L. Smith for Hoodoo, <laughs> published by Clarion Books, an imprint of Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Hoodoo is the rich atmospheric 
tale of a boy trying to ward off an evil spirit in 1930s small town Alabama. When the foreboding stranger comes to town, Hoodoo Hatcher must use the folk magic passed down in his extended family to save the day. And illustrator Yuka Holmes. <laughs> For Voice of Freedom, Fannie Lou Hammer, Sp Hammer, Spirit of the Civil Rights Movement, written by Carol Boston Weatherford, published by Candlewick Press. Voice of Freedom, Fannie Lou Hamer, Spirit of the Civil Rights Movement, is a powerful biography of the heroic civil rights leader. Told with aspiring, inspiring poetry and vivid images, Hamer's humanity shines throughout this impressive collection. The committee selected illustrator honor books, too. Aura Gregory Christie, Christie for the book Itch, Freedom, Truth, and Harlem's Greatest Bookstore, written by Vonda Michelle Nelson, published by Carol Rhoda Books, a division of Learner Publishing Group, Incorporated. And Christian Robinson. <laughs> For Lust that on Market Street, written by Matt Delpena, published by G.P. Putnam's Sons, an imprint of Penguin Group USA. The Coretta Scott King Illustrator Award goes to Brian Collier. <laughs> for a Trombone Shorty, written by Troy Andrews and Bill Taylor, published by Abrams Books for Young Reader, an imprint of Abrams. Collier creates vibrant, bold color images, collages, and that portray the musical growth of a boy in the jazz tradition of the train neighborhood of New Orleans. Collier's illustrations capture, capture important events in Andrew's life, as well as the spirit of his beloved city and its music. The Coretta Scott King Awards Committee chose three author honor books. They are Jason Reynolds and Brendan Cady for All American Boys, published by Athenaeum Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing Division. Jason Reynolds for <laughs> The Boy in the Black Suit, published by Athenaeum Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing Division. And Ilsha Shabazz and Tekla Magoon for X, a novel published by Candlewick. I am pleased to announce the winner of this year's Coretta Scott King Author Award is Rita Williams. Garcia, for Crazy in Alabama, published by Amistad, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. Gone Crazy in Alabama is the final book in the Williams Garcia's trilogy about the Gaither sisters. She blends cultural and family history in a vivid, readable way laced with humor. Each sister is a distinct individual growing, changing, and helping to change the perspectives of their elders. I would like to thank Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop and the Coretta Scott King jury who made today's announcement possible. Will you all please stand and be recognized? Thank you, Pauletta. I would now like to introduce Candace Mack, president of the Young Adult Library Services Association, also known as Candace. Good morning, everyone. As most of you walked in this morning, I'm sure you all noticed the announcement of this year's Alex Award recipients. I would like to ask Alex Award Chair Angela Craig and her, members of her committee to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you all so much for making this award possible. Now on to the Margaret A. Edwards Award. The Margaret A. Ed Edwards Award was established in 1988 and honors an author and specific titles by that author for significant and lasting contribution to young adult literature. The award recognizes an author's work in helping adolescents become aware of themselves and addressing questions about their role and importance in relationships, society, and the world. It is sponsored by School Library Journal and administered annually by YALSA. The award is named for Margaret A. Edwards, a pioneer in youth services. Through her work at Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore, <laughs> Edwards demonstrated that only through literature would young adults move beyond themselves into a larger world. This year's winner of the Margaret A. Edwards Award for significant and lasting contribution to young adult literature is David Levitin. Once again, the winner is David Levithan for the realm of possibility, boy meets boy, love is the higher law, how they met, and other stories, wide awake, and Nick and Nora's infinite playlist. David Levithan has given a voice to teens who often feel marginalized. His work has allowed readers to experience life and love from many different perspectives. While his stories are written with high literary quality, they're accessible and engaging to everyone who reads them. He has been on the forefront of issues that are vital to teens. His writing shows teens the importance of inclusion and the acceptance, acceptance of themselves and others just as they are. The Margaret A. Edwards Award Committee is a virtual committee, but please help me thank Valerie Davis and members of her committee for their efforts in selecting David Levithan as this year's winner. The William C. Morris Award honors a book written for young adults by a first time, previously unpublished author. The award's namesake is William C. Morris, an influential innovator in the publishing world and an advocate for marketing books for children and young adults. William, called Bill by his friends and colleagues, left an impressive mark on the field of children's and young adult literature. He was beloved in the publishing field and the library profession for his generosity and marvelous enthusiasm for promoting literature for children and teens. The William C. Morris Award Committee selected five finalists in December. They are Because You'll Never Meet Me, written by Leah Thoms Thomas, published by Bloomsbury Children's Books. Conviction, written by Kelly Lloyd Gilbert, published by Hyperion, an imprint of Disney Book Group. Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, written by Becky Albertalli, published by Balzer and Bray, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. The Sacred Lies of Minno Bly, written by Stephanie Oakes, published by Dial Books, an imprint of Penguin Young Readers. And The Weight of Feathers, written by Anna Marie McLemore, published by Thomas Dunn Books, an imprint of St. Martin's Press. The winner of the 2016 William C. Morris Award is Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, written by Becky Albertalli, published by Balzer and Bray, an imprint of HarperCollins Publisher. On the brink of coming out, Simon's plans are derailed by a scheming classmate who learns about Simon's email exchanges with a mysterious boy that Simon may just be falling in love with. Tickets to the presentation of the Morris Award, which will take place at 10.30 a.m. this morning in room 205 B.C. of the Boston Convention and Exhibit Center will be available at the door. Authors Anna Marie McLemore, Stephanie Oakes, Becky Albertalli, and Leah Thomas will attend. 
I would like to thank the William C. Morris Award Committee for their efforts in selecting today's honorees. Will Morris Award Chair Nicole King and her committee please stand and be recognized? The Excellence in Nonfiction Award honors the best nonfiction book published for young adults ages 12 to 18 each year. The award committee selected five award finalists in December, and they are Symphony for the Dead, Symphony for the City of the Dead, Dmitry Shostakovich and the Siege of Leningrad, written by M.T. Anderson and published by Candlewick Press. Enchanted Air. Two Cultures, Two Wings, a Memoir, written by Margarita Engel and published by Athenaeum Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing. First Flight Around the World, The Adventures of the American Flyers Who Won the Race, written by Tim Grove and published by Abrams Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Abrams. This Strange Wilderness, the Life and Art of John James Audubon, written by Nancy Plain and published by University of Nebraska Press. And Most Dangerous, Daniel Ellsberg and the Secret History of the Vietnam War, written by Steve Scheinkin and published by Roaring Brook Press, an imprint of Macmillan's Children's Publishing Group. The winner of the 2016 Award for Excellent, Excellence in Nonfiction is Most Dangerous, Daniel Ellsberg and the Secret History of the Vietnam War, written by Steve Scheinkin and published by Warren Brook Press, an imprint of Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. Scheinkin's thrilling journalistic account of government insider Daniel Ellsberg is a cinematic work that crackles with excitement. This exploration of American history examines the United States' involvement in the Vietnam War, details the reversal of one man's loyalties, and explores honor and morality. Tickets will be available at the door for the Yalsa Nonfiction Award presentation, which will take place at 10.30 a.m. this morning in room 205 BC of the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center with all authors attending. <laughs> I would like to thank the Yelsa Excellence and Nonfiction Committee for their efforts to select today's honorees. Will Nonfiction Award Chair Gregory D. Lum and his committee please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Our next award. <laughs> is the Michael L. Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature. The award first given in 2000 is named for the late Michael L. Prince, a Topeka, Kansas school librarian who had a passion for books and reading and a commitment to finding the right book for the right student. The award is administered annually by YALSA and is sponsored by Booklist Magazine. The committee chose two Prince Honor Books. They are Out of Darkness by Ashley Hope Perez and published by Carol Rota Lab, an imprint of Carol Rota Books, a division of Learner Publishing Group. And The Ghosts of Heaven by Marcus Sedgwick and published by Roaring Brook Press, an imprint of Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. And now I am pleased to announce that the winner of the Michael A. Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature is Bone Gap by Laura Ruby, published by Balzer and Bray, an imprint of Harper P Collins Publishers. <laughs> Told from alternating viewpoints, Bone Gap perfectly melds elements of fairy tales, myths, gothic romance, and magic realism into the story of Finn, who lives in a town with gaps in the very fabric of time and place. I would like to thank the Michael L. Prince Award Committee for their efforts to select today's honorees. Will Prince Award Chair April J. Woodavine and her committee please stand and be recognized? <laughs> the 
Now I would like to reintroduce you to Andrew Medler, President of the Association for Library Service to Children, who will announce the remainder of today's awards. We've met, thank you. <laughs> I'm now delighted to announce the remainder of today's awards, which are administered by the Association for Library Service to Children, also known as ALSC is the world's largest organization dedicated to the support and enhancement of service to children in all types of libraries. Our first award is the Odyssey Award, an annual award given to the producer of the best audiobook for children or young adults available in English in the United States. The Odyssey Award is jointly administered by ALSC and YALSA, both divisions of the American Library Association and is sponsored by Booklist Magazine. The committee chose one Odyssey Honor audiobook. It is Echo, produced by Scholastic Audio, Paul R. Gagne, written by Pam Munoz Ryan, and narrated by Mark Rommel, David DeVries, McLeod Andrews, and Rebecca Soler. And now, I am pleased to announce the winner of the Odyssey Award for the best audiobook produced for children or young adults. The War That Saved My Life. Produced by Listening Library, an imprint of the Penguin Random House Audio Publishing Group, written by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley and narrated by Jane Entwistle. Hoping to escape an abusive parent, a lame but determined girl follows her younger brother when he is sent to safety during World War II. The children find that leaving the city may not only have saved them from a bomb, but also changed their lives forever. You're not to worry, the iron-faced woman said, which was perhaps the most ridiculous lie I'd ever heard. She thumped her clipboard. I've got the perfect place for you. Are they nice? Jamie asked. It's a single lady, the woman replied. She's very nice. Jamie shook his head. Mam says nice people won't have us. The corner of the iron-faced woman's mouth twitched. She isn't that nice. <laughs> I would like to thank the Odyssey Award Committee for their efforts to select today's honorees. Will Odyssey Award Chair Cindy Lombardo and her committee please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Our next award is the Pura Belpre Award. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the Pura Belpre Award, which honors the Latino Latina writer and illustrator who works best portrays, affirms, and celebrates the Latino cultural experience in an outstanding work of literature for children and youth. I would now like to introduce Beatriz Guevara, President of the National Association to Promote Library and Information Services to Latinos and the Spanish Speaking, also known as who will announce the award winners in both English and Spanish. Thank you, Andrew. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. The Pura Belpre Award is co-sponsored by ALSC and Reforma, an affiliate of the American Library Association. Reforma works to recruit bilingual and bicultural library professionals and support staff. It supports the development of the library services and programs that meet the needs of the Latino community. Now, on with today's announcement. The committee chose three Pura Belpre honor books for illustration. My Tata's Remedies, Los Remedios de Mi Tata, Illustrated by Antonio Castro L., written by Ronnie Capin, Rivera Ashford, and published by Cinco Puntos Press. Mango, Abuela, and Me. <laughs> Illustrated by Angela Dominguez, written by Meg Medina, and published by Candlewick Press. And Funny Bones, Posada and His Day of the Dead Calaveras. Illustrated and written by Duncan Tana Tui and published by Abrams Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Abrams. And now I am pleased to announce the winner of the Pura Belpre Award for Illustration, The Drum Dream Girl. 
illustrated by Rafael Lopez, written by Margarita Engel, and published by Hudson Mifflin Hardcourt. Rafael Lopez's flawless and detailed illustrations bring to life Margarita, Engel's story of Millo Castra Saldarriega, a Chinese African Cuban girl in 1930s Cuba who became a world renowned drummer. Illustrations in acrylic paint on wood are warm and vibrant. Vivid double spreads provide a dynamic rendering of the story. Las ilustraciones perfectas y detalladas de Rafael López le dan vida a la historia de Margarita Engle sobre Millo Castro Saldarriaga, una muchacha chino-africana residente en la Cuba de los años 30 del siglo pasado que alcanzó la fama como percusionista de fama mundial. Las ilustraciones en acrílico sobre madera son cálidas y brillantes y su ubicación a página doble ofrece una dinámica interpretación de la historia. The committee selected two Pura del Pre honor books for text. The Smoke and Mirror, written by David Bowles and published by IFWG Publishing Inc. And Mango, Abuela and Me, written by Meg Medina, illustrated by Angela Dominguez and published by Candlewick Press. This year's Pura del Pre Award for text goes to Enchanted Air, Two Cultures, Two Wings, a memoir written by Margarita Angle and published by Athenium Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing Division. This memoir and verse conveys the story of growing up in two cultures during an era of great tension between the United States and Cuba. Author Margarita Angle takes her young audience on a journey of longing. It is a story that touches on issues affecting numerous immigrant children today. Estas memorias en verso narran la historia de crecer en dos culturas durante una era de gran tensión entre los Estados Unidos y Cuba. La escritora Margarita Engle lleva a su joven público en un viaje de añoranza. Es una historia conmovedora sobre cuestiones que afectan actualmente a numerosos niños inmigrantes. Will Pura del Pre Award Chair Ana Elba Pavón and her committee please stand and be recognized? <clears throat> Thank you for your work. Gracias, Beatriz. Y gracias a Reforma por todas sus contribuciones importantes a la juventud. Our next award is the May Hill Arbuthnot Honor Lecturer Award. Each year, an individual of distinction in the field of children's literature is chosen to deliver the May Hill Arbuthnot Honor Lecture. The lecturer prepares and presents an original paper that makes a significant contribution to children's literature. The 2017 Arbuthnot Lecture will be delivered by Jacqueline Woodson. Woodson is the 2014 National Book Award winner for her New York Times best-selling memoir, Brown Girl Dreaming. The author of more than two dozen books for young readers, she is a four-time Newbery Honor winner, a recipient of the NAACP Image Award, a two-time Coretta Scott King Award winner, and was recently named the Young People's Poet Laureate by the Poetry Foundation. <laughs> Will the Mayhill Arbuthnot Honor Lecture Award Chair Ellen Hunter Ruffin and her committee please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Next is the Mildred L. Batchelder Award, which honors the American publisher of the most outstanding title originally published in a language other than English in a country other than the United States and subsequently translated into English for publication in the United States. There are three Batchelder honor books. This year's honor books are Adam and Thomas, published by Seven Stories Press, written by Aaron Appelfeld, illustrated by Philippe Dumas, translated by Jeffrey M. Green. Grandma Lives in a Perfume Village, published by North South Books, an imprint of Nord Sud Verlag AG, written by Fong Zhu Zhen, illustrated by Sonia Danowski, translated by Wang Xumin. And written and drawn by Henrietta, published by Toon Books, 
an imprint of Raw Junior LLC, written, illustrated, and translated by Liniers. This year's Mildred L. Batchelder Award goes to The Wonderful Fluffy Little Squishy, published by Enchanted Lion Books, written and illustrated by Beatrice Alemania, translated by Claudia Zoe Bedrick. This book tells the story of exuberant five-year-old Eddie, who, after a spirited quest through a round of traditional merchants in her picturesque French village, parlays a bit of brioche, a four-leaf clover, a mother-of-pearl button, and a British naval postage stamp into an elusive, perfect birthday gift for her mother while discovering her own special talent. Will the Mildred L. Batchelder Award Chair, Beth Rosania, and her committee please stand and be recognized. I would now like to present the Robert F. Seibert Medal. The Seibert Medal honors the author and illustrator of the most distinguished informational book for children. Informational books are defined as those written and illustrated to present, organize, and interpret documentable factual material for children. The award is named to commemorate Robert F. Seibert, founder of Bound to Stay Bound Books, Incorporated. The committee chose four Seibert honor books. Drowned City, Hurricane Katrina and New Orleans, written and illustrated by Don Brown, published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. The Boys Who Challenged Hitler, Knud Peterson and the Churchill Club, written by Philip Hose, published by Farrar Strauss Drew Books for Young Readers. Turning 15 on the Road to Freedom, my story of the 1965 Selma Voting Rights March, written by Linda Blackman Lowry, as towed to Elspeth Leacock and Susan Buckley, illustrated by P.J. Loughran, published by Dial Books, an imprint of Penguin Group USA LLC. And Voice of Freedom, Fannie Lou Hamer, Spirit of the Civil Rights Movement, written by Carol Boston Weatherford, illustrated by Equa Holmes, published by Candlewick Press. And now, I am very pleased to announce that the winner of the Robert F. Seibert Medal for the most distinguished informational book is Funny Bones, Posada and His Day of the Dead Calavaris, written and illustrated by Danka Chiu, published by Abrams Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Abrams. Dancing Calaveras skeletons cavort through this playful biography about the Mexican artist Jose Guadalupe Posada. In lively art and text, Tanatua describes Posada's techniques, times, and the social impact of his very vibrant art. Will the Robert F. Seibert Medal Chair Elizabeth C. Overmeyer and her committee please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Our next award is the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Children's Video. The Carnegie Medal honors the most outstanding video production for children released during the previous year. The medal was established in 1991 with support from the Carnegie Corporation of New York. This year's winner of the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Children's Video is That Is Not a Good Idea produced by Weston Woods Studios, Incorporated. In an innovative adaptation of this read-aloud favorite, Goose accepts an invitation to accompany Fox on a simple stroll, or is it? Watch along with a comical chorus of goslings as they react to this cautionary tale. <laughs> Would you care to go for a stroll? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that is not a good idea. Would 
Would you care to continue our walk into the deep, dark <laughs> woods? Deep, dark woods? Ooh, sounds fun! to visit my nearby kitchen. <laughs> well, the Andrew Carnegie Medal, notable children's video chair, Elizabeth L. Deskins, and members of her committee, please stand and be recognized. Next is the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award, which honors an author or illustrator whose books have made a substantial and lasting contribution to literature for children. This year's recipient is Jerry Pinckney. Growing up in Philadelphia, Pinckney struggled with dyslexia as a child, but his mother read books to him, and both parents encouraged his love of drawing. For over 50 years, he has created engaging, enduring art published in more than 100 books. Pinckney's award-winning works include The Lion and the Mouse, recipient of the Caldecott Medal, The Moon Over Star, The Old African, John Henry, and back home. In addition, he has received five Caldecott Honor Awards, five Coretta Scott King Illustrator Awards, and four Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honors. Will the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award Chair, Crystal Card Jeter, and members of her committee please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your work. Our next award is the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award. The Theodore Seuss Geisel Award honors the author and illustrator of a book for beginning readers who demonstrate great creativity and imagination in their literary and artistic achievements to engage children in reading. The award is named for the world-renowned children's author, Theodore Seuss Geisel, AKA, the award committee has selected three Geisel honor books. This year's honor books are A Pig, A Fox, and A Box, written and illustrated by Jonathan Fensky, published by Penguin Young Readers, an imprint of Penguin Group USA LLC. Super Truck, written and illustrated by Stephen Savage, a Neil Porter book published by Roaring Book Press, a division of Holtzbrink Publishing Holdings Limited Partnership. And Waiting, written and illustrated by Kevin Henkes, published by Green Willow Books, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. This year's Theodore Seuss Geisel Award goes to Don't Throw It to Mo, written by David A. Adler, illustrated by Sam Ricks, published by Penguin Young Readers, an imprint of Penguin Group USA LLC. In Don't Throw It to Mo, underdog football player Mo Jackson may be the smallest kid on his team, but Coach Steve has a big plan for him to save the day. Readers will cheer as eager Mo proves the doubters wrong and makes the winning catch. Will the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award Chair Amanda Folk and members of her committee please stand and be recognized? And now, for the announcements of the oldest and most widely known awards, the Caldecott and Newbery Medals. 
You know uh, how on many award shows, you'll see award a recipient come up and say, I've been practicing this announcement and this thank you speech in my mirror for years. I've been practicing saying this in my mirror for years, so here we go. First awarded in 1938 in honor of the 19th century English illustrator Randolph Caldecott, the Caldecott Medal is awarded to the artist of the most distinguished American picture book for children published during the previous year. The committee has chosen four Caldecott honor books. They are Trombone Shorty, illustrated by Brian Collier, written by Troy Andrews, published by Abrams Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Abrams. It's hard to wait, isn't it? Yeah. Waiting, illustrated and written by Kevin Henkes, published by Green Willow Books, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. Voice of Freedom. Fannie Lou Hamer, Spirit of the Civil Rights Movement, illustrated by Ekua Holmes, written by Carol Boston Weatherford, published by Candlewick Press. And Last Stop on Market Street, illustrated by Christian Robinson, written by Matt De La Pena, published by G.P. Putnam Sons, an imprint of Penguin Group. The winner of this year's Randolph Caldecott Medal for outstanding illustration of a children's book is Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear. Illustrated by Sophie Blackall, written by Lindsay Maddock, published by Little Brown and Company, a division of Hachette Book Group Incorporated. Finding Winnie is an incredible account of the friendship and love shared between a soldier and the real bear who inspired Winnie the Pooh. Blackhaw beautifully interprets this multidimensional family story through her distinctive Chinese ink and watercolor art, capturing intimate and historical details perfect for a child's eye. Will the Randolph Caldecott Medal Chair, Rachel G. Payne, and members of her committee please stand and be recognized. Thank you all for your good work. And finally, now, the John Newberry Medal. First awarded in 1922 and named after 18th century British bookseller John Newberry, this medal is awarded annually to the author of the most distinguished book for children published during the previous year. Three honor book titles have been named Newberry Honor Books. They are The War That Saved My Life, written by Kimberly Brewbreaker Bradley, published by Dial Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Penguin Group, USA, LLC. Roller Girl, written and illustrated by Victoria Jameson, published by Dial Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Penguin Group, USA, LLC. And Echo, written by Pam Munoz Ryan and published by Scholastic Press, an imprint of Scholastic Incorporated. And now, the winner of this year's John Newberry Medal for the year's most distinguished contribution to American literature for children is Last Stop on Market Street. <laughs> Written by Matt De La Pena, illustrated by Christian Robinson, and published by G.P. Putnam Sons, an imprint of Penguin Group, USA, LLC. In Last Stop on Market Street, CJ's journey with his Nana is not just a simple ride. It's a multi-sensory experience through which he discovers that beautiful music, nature, and people surround him. CJ's questions are familiar, and Nana answers him with gentle wisdom. Right up until their arrival at the last stop on Market Street, Nana guides CJ to become a better witness 
for what is beautiful. Will the John Newberry Medal Chair, Ernie J. Cox, and his committee please stand and be recognized. Thank you all so very much. And I want to say once again, thank you to all of the committees for your very distinguished work and making today's announcements possible. We couldn't have done it without you. Congratulations on a job well done. Congratulations to all of the winners. Thank you very much.